In this video, I'm going to show my initial Division C build. If you've seen my Division B tower videos, the design and build process will look very familiar, as the only relevant difference between the two is the 60 centimeter minimum height instead of 50 centimeters. I'm going to start with a non-bonus version of the tower to see if I can achieve a good benchmark score to compare future builds to and to see if it will be worthwhile to risk the bonus design later. As I showed with the Division B initial builds, here is the design page for the Division C version. This design has 10 layers to keep the layer height about the same as the Division B version. I'm going to focus a bit more on the material selection for the cross members. If you recall from some of the Division B builds, when the cross members fail, they tend to be on the lower layers. That makes a lot of sense as those pieces are longer than the others and still need to hold up against the same buckling forces. By that very observation, that means that the cross members should not all be made out of the exact same material for an optimal design. If you were to pick cross members properly suited for the bottom layer, the top layers would be over designed and too heavy. Similarly, if you pick them all based on the top layers, you'd see failure at the bottom. Here are my notes for this build. I picked legs that should be reasonable based on my Division B experience, and for the cross members, I decided to use all 132nd by 120th inch size balsa, but I carefully picked out different source material to have three different density groups. This is one reasonable approach to varying the strength of your cross members. The 3D printed jig was created by just scaling the Division B version by 120% in the Z direction only. I recommend assembling the jig by just using masking tape on the exterior like shown here to get the smallest gap possible between the pieces. I can't emphasize enough how important what is shown in this picture is with regards to prepping your material ahead of any building. Here you can see that I've carefully cut and marked the legs as well as all the cross member pieces. I like to keep my cross member pieces cut to 2x to reduce the number of pieces on the workspace. I just cut those in half right before using them for an X. I would estimate that careful material selection and preparation takes me about one third of the total time of the entire build. These 10 layer towers take about three hours to build, so budget around an hour just to get to this point. That may sound excessive, but having a very methodical process helps you not make any mistakes with this fairly tedious build. The next step is to tape the legs into place with blue painter's tape. Make sure the legs are perfectly flat on your working space. With the legs taped in place, it's now possible to set the jig on its side so it's easier to attach the cross members. You can see all the marks on the legs where the cross members will be attached. This is a very important part of the process. You always want to know exactly where you are placing a part before you apply any glue. Here is the process with one side completed. Take your time and don't forget to glue the center point of the cross member X's. The channel in the jig was designed specifically to help prevent the gluing of the tower to the jig at that center point, and it seems to work pretty well for that. Once you have two opposite sides done, stand the jig upright so you can carefully sand the excess cross member pieces to create a flat surface for the remaining sides. Now that all four sides are done, the final step while the tower is attached to the jig is to sand the top so the loading block will sit perfectly flat. Carefully remove the tape holding the legs to the jig, and with any luck, your tower will lift right off. I like to use a push pin to help remove the painter's tape by sliding it under one side so I don't risk my fingers breaking any of the fragile cross members. Let's test this tower and see how it does. Here it is just before testing, and it weighs 4.96 grams. Here is the live testing of the tower. You can see the base properly spans the 20 centimeter green square in the middle. When setting up this for testing, be very careful when threading a chain down the middle. It can be useful to have a second person hold the base of the tower in place while the other person slowly lowers the chain. These 60 centimeter towers might be the most fragile devices of all the Science Olympiad builds, so take extra care not to do any damage before testing begins. Definitely make sure you have at least tried setting up your tower before your first competition so you get a feel for how challenging it is. You will also notice that this design is flexible at the base in two opposite leg directions. That is normal, but make sure it's as square as possible to get the most sturdy situation.
Not bad at all. This first build held 14.06 kilograms for an actual efficiency of 2,835. If we apply the log bonus, which I assume anyone watching this channel will have no problem getting, the competition score is 3,544. It looks like the first failure point was in the cross members at the bottom. That means that the very density cross members didn't quite do their job well enough. In the next build, I'll see if I can find a better solution to address that. Remember that for these non-bonus designs, we really don't want to hold more than 15 kilograms. Ideally, it would break in multiple places at exactly 15 kilograms, which means the build was balanced and optimized for exactly the maximum load and no more. In the next video, I will try to do better than this build to see if I can come up with a good benchmark score. Thanks for watching, and as always, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.